What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, the Time Teller. So guys, if you're familiar with this channel at all, you know I have a bit of an expression here. Uh, everyone needs a G-Shock in their collection, period. But okay, let's say you don't have a G-Shock. Let's say you just got a G-Shock. Let's say you're on the fence and uh, you're thinking about it. Well, this episode's for you. Here's everything I wish I knew before buying a G-Shock. It's 5.06 p.m. Let's get down to business. Alrighty, people. Well, before we get started, let's go take a look at what I'm wearing today. I'm wearing my G-Shock Mudmaster Triple Sensor. This is an absolute behemoth of a watch. You'll notice it's on a Barton canvas strap because, uh, well, we're going to talk about why it's on this canvas uh, strap here in a moment. But yeah, dude, this thing does everything and more. It's got a compass, a barometer, a thermometer, an altimeter. This is the ultimate SH. TF watch. I can't say those words on YouTube because then, you know, demonetized. But that was a perfect segue to the first point of the episode. Uh, the first thing I wish I knew before buying a G-Shock um, is that they give me a rash, okay? Uh, and it's not just me. The, the fact is, um, their straps are fairly uncomfortable, usually pretty stiff, and that resin, um, it gives a lot of people some not great reactions. So here's the deal. I had to put it on this Barton canvas strap using some strap adapters. You can watch the video of how I did it here. Special thanks to Barton. I'm legally obligated to let you know uh, they gave me this strap for free um, because, you know, FTC guidelines, man. The government, <laughs> they'll get you. But yeah, Barton didn't pay me, but they did give me the strap. So special thanks to you guys for that. But yeah, they're straps. They're just uncomfortable. They don't let your skin breathe. So if you're sweating, um, you know, it'll just it kind of just get caught up in there and irritate the skin. Um, so are the straps durable? Yes, to a point. Eventually, they'll start to kind of, um, I don't know, crack and crumble. And that's happened to me on a, on a multitude of some of my older G-Shocks from the 90s. Uh, but yeah, the best thing to do, in my opinion, is just to buy some NATO strap adapters and throw on a different strap and you'll be good to go. But it would have saved me a lot of physical discomfort if I had known that before I bought one. Next thing I wish I knew before buying a G-Shock is that solar power, uh, pretty important and kind of a lifesaver. So if you're like me, um, I wear these G-Shocks when I go camping, when I go in my Rubicon and we go overlanding, um, you know, when I'm out and about and I want something super duper tough. That means I want something I'm really going to rely on and uh, I don't necessarily want something uh, that could run out of juice on me. But here's the deal. There's a little bit of, of a caveat, excuse me. I have a DW6600 from the 1990s. Uh, the straps have broken. Um, I've put that on a NATO strap adapter. I wear that every day. Um, and uh, I've never had to replace the battery on it. So although solar power, um, I would say it, it'd be most prudent to find a G-Shock with solar power. Uh, you don't necessarily have to because um, yeah, my G-Shocks from the 90s, I've never had to replace the batteries at all. Which brings me to my next point, okay? And this is kind of confusing because I said the solar power is important, but then again, I've never had to replace the batteries on my non-solar powered ones. Uh, the auto backlight feature is really useless and it kills the battery, okay? So I have the GX56BB1 King G-Shock that is solar powered. Um, now, I was using that to go camping a lot over last summer, uh, and I thought that the auto backlight feature would be cool. So that's when uh, you move your wrist a certain way and uh, it triggers the light to turn on. Well, I had that going for a little while, and then I noticed after a day, um, it totally, it ran out of juice, okay? I had to leave it um, on uh, the dash of my Jeep until it got enough sunlight to recharge. So uh, yeah, I wish I knew that before I, I, I got that watch because that's kind of a bummer. Also, G-Shock with negative displays, uh, not easy to read. Okay, that same thing that GX56BB1 has a, a negative display. It looks really cool, um, but it's very difficult to read. So again, when it runs out of juice and that backlight doesn't turn on, good luck. The next thing I wish I knew before buying a G-Shock, and this is a very controversial statement, um, the atomic timekeeping attributes, not worth the money, okay? Kind of a gimmick. Uh, now, you'll say, well, this triple sensor has atomic timekeeping. Yes, but they don't make this watch 
without that feature. If they did, I would have purchased it. You know why? Because it would have been cheaper. Here's an example, uh, the DW5600, you can get that for around, uh, I don't know, 40 bucks. I got mine for like 37 bucks on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description to my Amazon store. It should be around $40. Um, doesn't have solar power, uh, doesn't have radio control, atomic timekeeping signals. Um, it's just kind of a very basic G-Shock, probably one of the more basic G-Shocks you can find. Okay, um, if you were to find the radio controlled version, uh, the atomic timekeeping version. Um, it's like double to triple the price. The GX56 BB1, King G-Shock, solar powered, no atomic timekeeping. You go ahead and look at the variant. Um, for that one, it's about two to three times the price. So again, for that simple attribute of atomic timekeeping or uh, radio signal controlling, whatever they wanna call it, it's a gimmick because the majority of people that I've heard from, um, it doesn't work half the time. So yeah, that's a huge bummer. So I don't know, saved me a lot of money um, because I wish I, I, I wish other people actually knew about that before they bought a G-Shock. So at that point, that one's for you. So okay, the next thing I wish I knew before buying a G-Shock, now this triple sensor, this Mudmaster, this is one of the more expensive G-Shocks you can buy, but the more expensive ones aren't necessarily the best ones because of reasons I just stated earlier. The DW5600E1V, you can get that for around $40. That's probably the G-Shock I recommend the most. It does everything you'll need and nothing you don't. Um, it will, <laughs> dude, you can go swimming in it. Uh, has what, 200 meter water resistance rating, uh, timers, stopwatch, backlight. It's just a beast of a watch. So um, yeah, you don't necessarily need to break the bank with the uh, most high tech G-Shock ever to get a really cool one. So yeah, that's, that's a good point. <laughs> good job, Jory. All right, so here's a very controversial thing. Um, most of the things I say on this channel are pretty controversial because uh, apparently if you have your own opinions in the watch world, <laughs> Uh, very naughty naughty. Uh, bad boy! But all jokes aside, every time I talk about this Mudmaster and I talk about everything it does, uh, you know, okay, it does have atomic timekeeping, it is solar powered, uh, altimeter, barometer, thermometer, compass. People are like, why don't you just get an Apple Watch? Apple Watch does all of that and more. Well, the next point I want to bring up is an Apple Watch or some other kind of smartwatch does not equal a G-Shock, okay? They're not even comparable. The Apple Watch is not a substitute for a G-Shock, okay? Does the Apple Watch have a bunch of apps? Sure, can you make phone calls with it? Yeah, does it have maybe a camera? I don't I don't even know. Does it take your heart rate? Yes, I know that. But can you drop it? Uh, no. Can you go swimming with it? Well, for short periods of time. Um, you can't bump it up against a rock, you can't run it over, you can't huck it off of a mountain face and have it still work. Um, you essentially cannot rely on the Apple Watch in any of the situations you could with a G-Shock, okay? I know all these smartwatch techie fanatics are gonna wanna say, my Apple Watch is just as good. And if, and if you like a G-Shock, there's no way you could say that you don't like an Apple Watch. Well, yes I can, because uh, although you'll hate to admit it, they are not the same. Your piece of technology is very cool and very functional day to day, but you bring it out in the wilderness or you need it in an actual high stakes scenario, um, it's, it's not gonna hack it. And I know people in the comment section are like, oh really? <laughs> Time teller, what, how many high stakes scenarios do you find yourself in. Well, I don't because I take certain precautions, but I do go out in the mountains a lot. I go out in the wilderness a lot. I go camping a whole lot. And, um, you know, I'd rather have something I can rely on just in case things get bad uh, rather than find myself in a bad situation and not have something I need. So, yeah, there you go. The next point I want to make, uh, the next thing I, I wish I knew before buying a G-Shock, this is kind of uh, specifically for you people that are on the fence about G-Shock. So although the Apple Watch is not a viable alternative, there are some viable alternatives. Sunto, Iron Man, those are some really durable, typically digital watches uh, that you can choose from. They have a bunch of functionality. They're all very, very durable. So if you don't really like the look of the G-Shock, maybe G-Shocks are a bit too chunky and uh, kind of in your face, uh, maybe pick up a smaller Iron Man or a Sunto. Um, yeah, but I, I know a lot of people in law enforcement and military, um, they might not be a fan of G-Shocks, but they like those. So maybe check those out. But that being said, okay, not every digital watch is a viable alternative to a G-Shock for the same reason uh, I mentioned, you know, the Apple Watch. Um, just because a watch is digital, just because a watch has a battery in it, just because uh, a, a watch has a screen, 
doesn't make it, you know, on the same level as a G-Shock. Next thing I wish I knew before buying a G-Shock, kind of a bummer, people will look down at you for wearing a G-Shock. Uh, and unfortunately, it's within the watch community. It, it's, it's such a bummer, okay? I don't know why people within the hobby have to ruin the hobby. Um, now again, people are gonna be like, oh, well, Time Teller, you look down upon Invictas. Well, yeah, I mean, Invictas kind of asking for it. But I have a lot of friends that have a lot more expensive watches than myself. These guys wear Patex, these guys wear Longa, these guys wear VC, and um, yeah, they also wear G-Shock. So guess what? Uh, everyone should have a G-Shock in their collection, regardless of, you know, the price, the, the, the tax bracket you're in. <laughs> But yeah, unfortunately, again, I don't, I don't know why. I, because I, I suppose they're kind of chunky in, in your face and they don't have a mechanical caliber. Uh, they don't have a tourbillon. <laughs> Does that Mudmaster Triple Sensor have a tourbillon? Because it doesn't have any of that, apparently, you know, it's, it's not good enough to be worn on the wrist. Well, I absolutely disagree. And uh, most of my friends that collect watches uh, would disagree as well. And this is probably the most important point on the list today. Uh, and people got mad that, people always get mad about this pen. I don't understand why. They're like, you didn't even write anything in the episode. Well, yeah, I am. I'm checking things off my list. Um, this is the most important point in this whole video. Uh, the last thing and probably the first thing I wish I knew before even opening up this can of G-Shock worms. <sighs> One is not enough. Okay, you're going to get addicted to them. I, I, the first G-Shock I ever had, I stole from my dad. It was that DW6600. And uh, yeah, it was really cool. I beat the crap out of it to this day. I wear it weekly. And uh, you know, that could have been enough. But then I was like, oh wait, there's another one. Why not? Well, should add, add another one to the potty, well, big deal. And then, you know, if you do, Days go by, I see another one online, and I'm like, okay, well, hey, that one's pretty cool. <laughs> Get that one, I'm like, okay, dude, that's enough. For the three or four G-Shocks, that's enough. But that Mudmaster, though. <laughs> Just counting my pennies till I can get a Mud. And then I got the Mudmaster, and I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm done. But then I need a King G-Shock, because that is the, I mean, it's the King G-Shock. You gotta get the King. And then, I'm done, though. I'm done, I promise. I'm done with buying G-Shocks. I don't need any more. But that Neo Tokyo looks looks pr that pretty cool. And there's like three different Neo Tokyos. So that's pretty cool. I might get that one. But after that, I'm done. Okay, I won't get any more after that. I promise, guys. So And that, that Cassie Oak, the Cassio Royal Oak, is just an homage of the Royal Oak. I'm not interested. Everybody freaked out about it. I'm not interested. But then some of my channel members showed me on a European site that they have an olive drab version coming out. And then after I get that one, I'm done. But I do need a Frogman, though. I do need the, the newest G-Shock Frogman. <laughs> well, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you had some fun. Everything I wish I knew before buying a G-Shock. Guys, wear your watches, and uh, if you tend to beat the crap out of your watches, then maybe get yourself a G-Shock, because this thing, uh, it'll punch back. No, but seriously, I hope you enjoyed yourself. Hope you learned something, and uh, what's your favorite G-Shock? And if you don't like G-Shocks, uh, what's your go-to tough guy watch? Leave that in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. And special thanks to my certified T3 bots, my channel members, for asking me the questions that I answer on this channel every day. The easiest way to get your answers, your, your answers questioned, your questions answered is to join the channel. Uh, the way you do that, you click the join button next to the subscribe button. It's kind of like YouTube's Patreon. I believe it's $4.99 a month. And guys, believe it or not, YouTube, Google, not super generous to little channels like mine, uh, relatively speaking. Um, and uh, yeah, we get easily the majority of the support from our channel members. So thank you guys, each and every one of you. I love ya. And again, if you're new here, click that subscribe button, hit that bell icon, check out www.thetimetellershop.com, the number one place to get affordable vintage luxury watches serviced with a one year warranty, handpicked by me. Check out links in the description below. It'll, a bunch of really cool um, kind of watch related uh, gifts and trinkets. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll take it in my Amazon store and just, yeah whole bunch of stuff going on here. Couldn't have done it without you. So guys, thank you so much. Like, comment, subscribe, share this with everyone you know. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. Always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. You see that light? James Bond should wear a freaking G-Shock with a tuxedo.